It's time for the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship. It's round three of nine for 2024 for Mission King of the Baggers from Brazelton, Georgia at Michelin Raceway, Road Atlanta. Setting the stage for our fifth race of the season. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg White. Standing alongside two-time national champ Jason Pridmore. And Jason, we were at Circuit of the Americas last week, and we had a banger of a weekend. Yeah, these guys played on the big stage along with MotoGP at Code, and you can see Kyle Wyman on the last lap. He goes up underneath Tyler O'Hara, only to have that favor repaid to him with three corners to go. And it was Troy Herfoss taking the win in the first race. The second race at Coda was just exciting, Greg. And when you go and you look back at these highlights, this was a big momentum swing for the 33 of Kyle Wyman. He ends up getting ahead of Herfoss going into the final lap, and he was able to hold on to get that win as Raspoli fought off back there to finish third. But it was Kyle Wyman with the win, Herfoss second, and James Raspoli finishing third in race two. And that was a big win for Harley Davidson and here's a look at the championship so far Kyle Wyman with 10 points over her on the three wins and four podiums for him but our national champ Hayden Gillum all the way down in fourth place but let's get to the third member of our broadcast team Hanalopa who's with this new sensation from Australia Troy Herfoss so many new challenges for the newest face in the Mission King of the Baggers class, Troy Herfoss. But, Troy, you have had some big success really early on. How do you plan to keep that momentum going into this weekend? Uh, it's been a lot of fun, but just back to basics. Yeah, keep it, what's the saying? Kiss, keep it simple, silly. That, that's my motto at the moment. Just keep it really basic. The bike's working good. Just, uh, yeah, learn the track, work through my things, and basically just start each weekend fresh and not, not, not come in here with expectations too high. Thanks, Troy. Best of luck. Thank you. And Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta, Jason, is not an easy track to learn. No, but the fun thing for Troy is he gets to go learn a bunch of new tracks this year. Road Atlanta being one of the tricky ones and fun ones down through turn one. You get up in that tricky turn uh, two, three, and three, B, four, down that hill into five. Greg, where you come out of five, and these bikes, as heavy as they are, they're still going to be wanting to wheelie out of five. Off the back straightaway, out of turn seven, you're going to do hard braking down into turn 10. We've seen some mistakes there already. And then up through the bridge, down to turn 12, very hard braking, and another short run to the finish line. So Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta is fun. All eyes are on Bobby Fong and his Insta360 camera. This guy is getting ready to put on a show for you today. Those Insta360 shots that were gathered on Friday afternoon. Roger, it really shows the challenges that this racetrack presents to these riders. Yeah, and it also is able to give you the opportunity. We hear all the riders talking about how physical this track is and, and the elevation and, you know, with all those different angles, you can really see it and you can see how much. What I like about it is you can see how much the riders are having to work, the way they're, you know, back and forth and how much energy talk about it being physical and guys being tired you see that video and you can see why physical condition is so huge and as you see the riders coming around for this warm-up lap you saw one of them shaking their arms out we talked about it a little bit yesterday but now two two days into this race weekend the arm pump that riders get here at road atlanta yeah it's really bad here it's by far the, the worst track some riders talk about they never experience and then when they come to atlanta they have it and i think as we've mentioned the elevation all weekend going down those hills i think the force in your hands on the handlebars is uh, what puts that extra stress on them and you see a lot of guys shaking those arms trying to stretch those forearms out especially when they're on the grid about to start the race and these big heavy 620 pound bagger bikes it's a lot to handle we're going to watch as this field of 12 takes it up to their starting positions we're going to send it right back over to greg and jason Mission King of the Baggers coverage is brought to you by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. By Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. And by Drag Specialties, an industry leading distributor of aftermarket parts and accessories for Harley Davidson and custom V-twin motorcycles. The starting grid for Mission King of the Baggers here at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta has Troy Hervas on pole. Seven tenths of a second ahead of Bobby Fong, Kyle Wyman. We have Hayden Gillum, Tyler O'Hara just outside is James Raspoli, then Landers, Flinders, and Onsorg with Travis Wyman, Corey West, 
and Jake Lewis rounding out the field. When you look at this field of the 12 riders we have, all of them are names here in the Moto America paddock. So, uh, you know, this, these, this race is going to be extremely tight. Rocco Landers, Greg, if you remember last week in code, I said it's only going to be a matter of time till he makes the jump. He's made the jump here in Atlanta. Expect him in this lead group. Eight laps scheduled for this race. Red lights are on, revs are up, here we go. And we're away, and boy, oh. Bobby Fong did not get a good launch, but Troy Herfrost certainly did on his Indian Challenger, and Kyle Wyman slots into second place as we bend her into turn one for the first time in race number one. Man, Bobby really didn't get off the line very well. I don't think it's gonna hurt him too much, Greg, once he gets that bike going here. You're gonna see him, he's back there in sixth spot or so, but these first four, five, six bikes have all shown that they can all run similar pace. I expect Bobby, he just came off the super bike, let's not forget. So I don't know how much fatigue will play uh, a, a difference for him. He's a pretty fit guy, but you can see he's pretty far back. I think he's got a problem. He does. Bobby Fong's got a problem. You can see him back there. Everybody's going by him, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately for the 50, Bobby Fong, the SDI Roland Sands Racing Indian Challenger, Looks like he's not going to be competitive in this one. But out front is the SNS Indian Motorcycle Challenger of Troy Herfoss. And right behind him is the Harley Davidson Factory Racing Road Glide of Kyle Wyman. And drafted pass. And there goes the Harley Davidson to the lead. Yeah, J Kyle Wyman right there. He was a little laid out for the siding lap, Greg, as you pointed out to me when we were sitting up here earlier. I was worried he may have had a problem, but right now that 33 looks like he wants to get to the front. And we've seen how good that bike. Look at it accelerate up over the top of this hill. I know that they've made some gearing changes and things to that bike throughout the course of the weekend. So the 33 is going to lead the first lap here over O'Hara. Then our defending champion, Hayden Gillum, at a track that he feels is a lot more suited to him than the Coda track a couple of weeks ago. So Hayden Gillum, he is 50 <laughs> points back, Greg, so he needs to make up some points. And the number one played on the Revzilla Motul, Vance and Hines, Harley Davidson, just lit off the rear brake. As if you've ever seen these motorcycles up close, you'll know that the rear brakes on some of these bikes are the same rotors they're going to put on the front of some motorcycles. They're absolutely huge. And uh, they use a lot of rear brake to slow these 620 plus pound motorcycles down. But we had a challenge Ray out. There's number 50, Bobby Fong. And it looks like Fong, well, we can hear him revving the engine, but he's making sure that he's out of the way. Back up to the front with the 33 Wyman. But Jay, we had a challenger race earlier today, and it was Troy Herfoss. It was a two lap dash for cash put on by Mission. And Troy Herfoss was able to win it. And we thought maybe he was going to have the same result. But that little race right there, even those couple laps, are going to allow these manufacturers to make quick changes during the day. It just looked like it was going to be hard to go past Troy, didn't it, in that two-lapper that we had? And I know it's just two laps, but it just looked like it was going to be difficult to go past. You see O'Hara looked like he had an instinct to go by Hayden Gillum, and he wasn't quite able to make that. Jason, as Greg mentioned, Herfoss did win that challenge, but he said this track creates really close racing here. This will be his first time doing over eight laps consecutively all weekend to see where he really stacks up. That's actually a really big deal, especially with the fact that it is an eight lap race and to not get a long run and to be able to see and feel what those Dunlop tires are going to do late in the race. Well, that could be something, but a good dress rehearsal as Herfoss up the hill. You can see him get a little sideways on the throttle. No electronic aids like you have on some of your street bikes, your sport bikes. No traction control, wheelie control, launch control, high side control, spin control, none of that <laughs> stuff. It's all right wrist. Down to the S as they go with six and a half laps to go in this Mission King of the Baggers race number one. Kyle Wyman continues to lead. And then it's Herfoss. The Australian, the three-time Australian Superbike champ. Rookie to this class, 37 years old, getting it done. The number one plate, Gillum, on that Revzilla Motul, Vance and Hines, Harley Davidson. And then you have Tyler O'Hara, who's on the SNS Indian Motorcycle Challenger. And then Rispoli, your second of the Harley Davidson factory racing machines. Yeah, bummer for James. He's just dropped off the leader's pace here, these top four. He's been having a little bit of a struggle this weekend as well. But, you know, as this race plays out, the thing is, is that the three guys that you see, uh, three out of the four guys in this fight, they've been here a bunch of times. Herfoss, though, is world class. I mean, he could go to any track anywhere in the world. This guy's won three Superbike championships in Australia, as we've documented in the past. And I think the funnest part about doing what he's doing this year 
is getting to come to another country, see a bunch of new racetracks, see how he can adapt to them. We've seen him adapt at Daytona. We saw him adapt to Coda extremely quick. And all these laps he's getting in right now behind Kyle Wyman, he's learning about this place as well. He's already experienced the draft effects that we've seen at Daytona. Coda, same thing down that back straightaway, but this place is a little more like Daytona because the draft down the back straightaway here really is a big deal. Those real short, slow corners at Coda sometimes make it a little bit harder to draft down that straightaway. James Rispoli, the team working on a new setup for him this weekend. Hemster try to get that bike sorted out. As Kyle Wyman has got it dialed in right now. Although the fastest lap of the race has gone to Hayden Gillum in third place at a 129.364 for Gillum. And Jay, that was on the back of sector number three, which has got a lot of twists and turns and some acceleration up a hill. So proving that the Revzilla Motul Vance and Hines Harley Davidson has got some balance to it, Jason. Yeah, there's no question. And uh, I think for Hayden, it's just. Some of these really, really fast tracks like we saw at Coda and Daytona were a little bit more of a struggle, and this place is the same way, but he's only got to defend this one real spot at the end of the back straightaway. Everything else pieces itself together, which is what Hayden likes to do. And Jason, you mentioned utilizing that draft here, and we saw some of that certainly at Daytona that it's known for, and Hayden said this bike is completely different than the bike that he was on at Daytona. They've certainly made strides this weekend, and it's reflected in those lap times. Different chassis, different offset, but it has him in a place that feels much more like home, especially after that last Superbike race on the Honda right before this one. You know, Hannah, the craziest part to me is when we were doing our stand-up earlier, Greg, we saw that graphic. He's 50 points back already in the championship after two rounds, which I almost thought was a misprint. You know, I thought there's no way Hayden could be 50 points back. The problem is, is that Kyle Wyman's won three out of the four and Herfoss has won the other. And the class is that competitive that you get the O'Hara's and the Raspolis and whoever that kind of gets in that mix. Next thing you know, Ky uh, Hayden's fifth and sixth or fifth places and things really hurt. He has got to start beating those two guys directly in front of him. The advantage, though, is that we're not in an abbreviated calendar anymore for Michigan King of the Baggers. We're at a full 18 race schedule that rivals the super sport category. So if there's room to make up those points, it'll be in this championship. Last time by the stripe, it was Kyle Wyman who went 129.349. Fastest lap of the race then on lap number three for Wyman. Herfoss starting to close the gap though, and now a pass for position as Tyler O'Hara goes around Hayden Gillum. And there goes Herfoss, a pass for the lead. And so Troy Herfoss on that SNS Indian Motorcycle Challenger takes over the spot. And there goes Hayden Gillum. He gets it back. Keep in mind, too, that Hayden Gillum just came off of a Steel Commander Superbike race. He's still got to get used to riding this bagger from the Superbike. And that may take a couple of laps to get it down. But Hayden Gillum back into third spot. Yeah, and now we're going to be able to see what can Kyle Wyman do to go back after Troy Herfoss and try to get his fourth win of the year. You know, Troy this morning laid down a lap time in uh, in qualifying that was extremely quick. I believe it was 28-3, I, I think is what the, the time was that he had done early today. It was actually 28-5. And we've already seen in this race, these guys are about a second off that. So see if Herfoss gets to the front here and starts dropping the hammer just a little bit and is able to try to get these guys back into the 28s. You can see he's made the first half of this lap look pretty good. He's got just the smallest gap ever over Kyle Wyman. We saw that Harley was able to draft past that Indian, but from this far back, Greg, I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Herfoss has put in a really good first half lap, and he knows it. That's what the little look over the shoulder is. That lets you know that, hey, I pushed this first half lap. Did I, did I break this guy behind me or not? And he's probably uh, pretty happy that he saw that little gap between him and Kyle. As you see O'Hara again, goes back past Hayden Gillum. And look at that thing sliding through that kink. And Gillum's just going to let off the lever again and go back up underneath him. And there he goes, back for third place. Hayden Gillum so good with a lot of dirt track experience. The Owensboro, Kentucky native, good on that rear brake. Now, Jay, it may be the same thing for Kyle Wyman, too, as Kyle got out early and tried to break away from the field and couldn't get it done. So both these riders with tons of experience. Keep in mind for Kyle Wyman, as we have race number five of the season on our hands, Kyle's only given five points away Amazing. to the entire field, which is incredible to think of, because obviously we've talked quite a bit about Troy Herfoss, because we know how good Kyle Wyman is. He's a champion, and Troy's the one who kind of caught us off guard coming to the States and being so good. Another look at the pass back for third. 
Yeah, you can see, and you know, for, for Tyler O'Hara, when you go by a guy down the back straightaway and you're on the left-hand side of the track, I mean, all, all Tyler's really got to do is this guy's been having problems this whole race, Rocco Landers has, I think. He, 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 this morning, Greg, he barely missed by a tenth of a second. He missed being in our challenge race, so I know he's had pace. And in this race, he's gone 33 flat, which just isn't like him. So he's had a problem, and I think that that, that, that bike, Vance and Heinz bike, which we very rarely see have problems, has, has parked itself. All right, so we have two and a half laps to go. Mission King of the Baggers race number one here at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. And Troy Horfoss continues to lead. Now, see, Tyler is going to go by in that draft. He's going to get past. Now, you just got to stay over to the left. If you're going to make let Hayden go down the outside of you, don't open that door. And this is what he's done this time. If he's going to go Whoa! by and go down the outside, and Gillum did it there anyway. So Tyler did everything I thought right there to, to try to get Hayden or keep him behind him. The only thing that would make a difference there is if he was able to draft him earlier and increase that gap. But you can see that big Indian spinning at the top of the hill at 160 plus mile an hour. As these guys now see the white flag, this is the last lap. So 29.4, 29.5, the two guys in third and fourth are at 30 flat, 30.1. They've lost touch. We've got two battles here for the podium, one for first and second, and one for that last spot on the podium. Yeah, and Hayden Gillum looking down at this championship long term. Those extra couple of points that you get, three points the difference between third and fourth place. He's going to want all the points he can get, although his championship rivals up the road. That's what's going to hurt him is Herfoss and Kyle Wyman have really put a stamp on this championship early season. And Kyle's trying so hard to get draw it onto the back of that Indian as they go through turn six and seven. It just looks like Herfoss is enough of a gap where Kyle's not going to be able to draft him. So we'll see here Indian horsepower versus Harley Davidson. These are the two guys that so far have dominated those first two places this season. Now Herfoss is going to try to uh, keep tight when they get down the end of the back straightaway. And let's see how this works out. You can see he's moving over to the left. Kyle Kyle's Lyman, gonna, he's going deep, deep, deep on the brakes, but there's so much real estate between the two. And now for third place, it looks like Hayden Gillum doing what he needed to do on a good run from 29 O'Hara. Is he going to be able to get underneath them? But all eyes on the front of the 17, Herfoss coming through the last corner. On the gas he goes, checkered flag waving, and it's going to be Troy Herfoss who takes the win over Kyle Wyman and Hayden Gillum able to hold off Tyler O'Hara for that final podium spot. So it's Indian Motorcycles with the big win over Harley Davidson that gets two on the podium here at Michelin Raceway, Road Atlanta, in race number one for Mission King of the Baggers. Just a little too much of a gap. And boy, Jason Herfoss, he makes it look easy, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. The way he rides the bike and sits on that thing, he just kind of plops himself right on top of it, Greg, and doesn't do a lot of moving around. But he was extremely good, really, from the top of that hill in that 2-3 section down through the S's, he would pull that gap. And it just was, it was just enough to where he was making it to where his competition couldn't get drafted back past him. So teammates rolling around on our cool down lap. And when we get back to Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta, we'll talk to the Australian about his big race one victory. Another race weekend, Roger, and another one where we see Troy Herfoss and Kyle Wyman leading the rest of the King of the Baggers field. Yeah, these two guys have definitely kind of separated themselves from the, the rest of the field. You know, they've won all the races between the two of them this year. So, uh, you know, the other guys got a, a little bit of work to do. Hayden Gillum, though, was kind of matching their lap times, but he was just too far back to close that gap. So for him tomorrow, if he could just have maybe a better first couple laps, not let them get that little gap. I think he can be in the mix toward the end. But uh, Troy Herfoss, ever since this morning, man, he's just been really fast. Kyle stepped up and uh, tried to run with him. But uh, Troy was just able to do some better lap times throughout the whole race. Yeah, he had several laps that were um, in that low 29 range. And did you watch him come around and celebrate some of the riders who didn't have the race that they were looking for? Bobby Fong had those problems early. Rocco Landers, another rider that we expected to be more in the mix, is um, showing off of the timesheets. So they've got some work to do overnight. Yeah, I'm not sure. Rocco talked about today he didn't get out toward the end of that uh, second qualifier. So maybe it's the same problem that he had this morning. And 
for Rocco not only missing the race and missing the points, but he's missing the seat time and riding with those guys and seeing, you know, how he needs to adjust his style. There is still a lot to learn, and tomorrow we know we're going to get a different set of track conditions. You see Troy Herfoss now pulling in to celebrate with his team. We're going to send it back next door so we can hear from our top three finishers. Mission King of the Baggers coverage is brought to you by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. By Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. And by Drag Specialties, an industry leading distributor of aftermarket parts and accessories for Harley Davidson and custom V-twin motorcycles. Back after Mission King of the Baggers, race number one is done and dusted. And Troy Herfoss, another outstanding performance. And Jay, his best lap of the race, a 129.377. His last lap, a 129.6. That consistency was able to get it done, even though the fastest lap of the race will be credited to Kyle Wyman at a 29.349. Here's a look at those results. It's a six-tenth of a second victory for Herfoss over Hayden Gillum. What a battle he had with Tyler O'Hara, James Rispoli, who lost touch midway through the race in fifth. And how about Max Flinders? Love it. Who gets that next group ahead of Corey West and Bobby Fong able to finish the race. But let's get down to Hannah with our winner, Troy Herfoss. Troy, second victory of the season. Troy, you followed Kyle Wyman for the first half of that race. Where was it that you were looking for the opportunity to get around him that you decided to then go ahead and make that move? Not telling. We've got a race tomorrow. <laughs> um, look. It's so hard with Kyle. Like he, um, he's a fox. He, he's whenever the flag drops for the race, he finds extra. So where I thought I was strong, I wasn't that strong. Um, hey, our lips are sealed. We, we're, we feel good and we're doing our best. And um, the Indian Challenge is working amazing. Um, I just feel, I feel, I keep saying, I feel lucky to get this opportunity and and to ride a bike that's so much fun to ride around. Such a, it's a I guess this is an all-American track. I'm happy to be here. It's a lot of fun. Congratulations on your second mission, King of the Baggers victory. Second place today, Kyle Wyman. Kyle, you led the first half of that race. Take us through it. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to try to get up front and try to control it, and we did for a little bit there. I took a peek back to see if he was alone, and uh, the I just had a little bit of a bad run down that back straightaway and let him have it, but he uh, he had my number today. You know, we had a... Uh, we had a pretty good battle there, there going for a little bit where I thought I was going to bring him in. He was stronger in a couple areas. I was stronger in a couple areas, but didn't have any tire left at the end. So, uh, yeah, he got me. This is uh, it's becoming a pretty good uh, battle between the two of us. But uh, thanks to the Harley-Davidson team this weekend, they've been working really hard to uh, get me comfortable, and uh, we made a big step for that race. So hopefully we can do something tomorrow. Thanks, Kyle. And rounding out your Mission King of the Baggers podium, Hayden Gillum. The defending champion, Hayden, you had your work cut out for you back there. How were you able to balance being defensive but also trying to ride aggressively enough to try and close that gap to the leaders? Yeah, uh, I needed every little bit of speed I could get to hang with those guys. They were they were rolling really good. And once once Tyler started coming up in there and we started getting after it a little bit, we, you know, just that little bit every lap was letting these guys get away. But uh, we knew it was going to be a fight. We were cranking springing rates and preload all into the front end i knew that was all i was going to be able to do is just fight back and uh yeah the vance and hines motul revzilla team gave me a really good bike this is our first podium of the year so <laughs> i'm happy with this one it was a good fight and hopefully first of many more congrats Hayden, guys yeah, that's important when he's talking about crank and spring and preload. That's that's because he needed to break a 620-pound motorcycle down a hill and keep it off the bottom of the forks. Here's the championship standings. After five races, it's Kyle Wyman with just five points over Troy Horfoss and James Rispoli, mm, 43 points back for the 43, and Hayden Gillum making up a little bit of ground on the rest of the field behind him, but still 54 points back in this championship ahead of Tyler O'Hara. Boy, what a championship we have up front. It is so impressive between Kyle Wyman and Troy Herfoss. It's the kind of racing you love to see at Michelin Raceway, Road Atlanta here in Brazelton, Georgia. More coming at you.
So, Roger, in two interviews today that we've heard from Troy Herfoss, he called Bobby Fong a bulldog. He just <laughs> called Kyle Wyman a fox. What animal would, would we What's attribute left? to Troy? I don't know. He, he, he's a dog, though, because he is quick, and he's a quick learner. And I just like, too, the way whenever he got beat by Kyle, that second race at Coda, he, he said Kyle was better than me today. He didn't make excuses, and then Kyle today says Troy was better than me today and, and doesn't make excuses. And I love when a rider can do that and can admit when somebody else, you know, it wasn't the bike. It was, you know, that rider was just a little bit better than me today. And there's certainly a great amount of respect that is developing between these riders that already exist. But we are now five races in to their 18 race championship and things are starting to take shape. And I think Troy Herfoss has just been the biggest surprise. Biggest surprise. And I think he just has to be, you know, the confidence that he's gaining from winning these races. He's been competitive so far at every track that we've been to. Uh, learns the tracks really quick. That's been the big thing. This place is really hard to learn with the elevation. And uh, I think we knew he was going to be fast. We knew he was going to be good. But I don't know if anyone expected it this soon. He has just been so smart in learning everything. It's not over yet. Let's send it back over to Greg and Jason to wrap things up. Race one highlights from Mission King of the Baggers, race number one. JP, it was a two-dog fight. Yeah, and you saw Bobby Fong's bike kind of hop off the line. That's the problems that he was going to have. And you see him here looking back. The fight at the front, though, was between the guys that are really duking it out for the championship. Kyle Wyman and Troy Herfoss. Both those guys being a little coy on the podium. Both feel like they're better in certain sections than the other one. And uh, it plays out pretty well for us here because we get to call races but Troy Herfoss goes up underneath Kyle Wyman. And at the same time, Hayden Gillum was doing the same thing to Tyler O'Hara. These two would battle all the way to the line as well for that third place finish, ultimately going to the defending champion. On the last lap, you can see these guys coming down into turn 10. O'Hara thought he was going to be able to maybe block down the inside, and Hayden Gillum rolled around the outside of him. As you see, Herfoss and Wyman go through the number one plate, ends up finishing third with Tyler O'Hara a really close fourth on the 29th. So that's five races in the books, JP. So we have 13 to go on this season. And do you see this championship going any differently than it's gone between Herfoss and Wyman at this point? There's there's three guys. I think I, when you start looking at it between Gillum and, 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 and uh, Rispoli, I think if they can keep Bobby Fong's bike running, he could be a guy that could get in there with those first two right now, as well as Rispoli, as well as Hayden Gillum. Those guys are definitely going to be there to uh, to mess this championship up for the other two. So the other two got to make sure that if one's winning, that they've got to be finishing second right behind the other. Yeah, and I think the thing to look at too is that, you know, we still, so far, Jason, if you look at what the racing that we've had in the series, everything has been a bright, sunny day. Yeah. But in this case, we might have some rain tomorrow, and that could really throw a wrench into everything. Yeah, no question. And we haven't seen the baggers in the rain a ton. We've seen them a little bit. So around Road Atlanta on a bagger on rain tires would be pretty entertaining, and I think that that's what we might have coming, like you say, for tomorrow. Weather doesn't look so good for us. So, And that's another thing that can really change the dynamic of what the championship is. And don't forget, this season it's going to battle all the way down to the end, but you have these manufacturers of Indian motorcycles who their home race is Brainerd, where Mission King of the Baggers is going, and, of course, Road America <laughs> the home track for Harley Davidson. So it's gonna be exciting to watch all year. And we got another one to get at you tomorrow. Can't wait to see you then.